So, where was Jesus' humility seen? Let's turn to Philippians in chapter 2 where we are told about the humility of Jesus Christ. And the humility of Jesus Christ is not seen in his washing the disciples' feet. Now, if I, if I were to ask you, brothers, give me a few examples of the humility of Jesus Christ. What will you tell me? He washed the disciples' feet. He never took a title like pastor or bishop or anything like that. He refused to take the crown. And uh, he was willing to be born in a manger and to be cru crucified on the cross. All these external things is what I think all of you will say, examples of the humility of Jesus Christ. But look what the Bible says is the proof of Jesus' humility. <clears throat> and let's reorient our thinking about humility from what the Bible teaches because Jesus said, learn humility from me, not from the dictionary. Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, he said, come to me, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am humble. And I have learned sought to learn humility from Jesus. Was he humble when he took the whip and chased out the money changers who were making money in the name of religion? Oh yes, he was humble all the time. And I have learned humility from Jesus. And learn more and more and more as I study the life of Jesus, I learn humility. I don't want to learn it from others who got false ideas of humility. I don't want to learn it from people who just say, oh, I'm such a wretch, I'm such a wretch, I'm such a wretch, I'm a useless man. Many people who say that are not pretty humble. Where is humility? Philippians chapter 2. It says here, have this attitude, verse 5, in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who, let me go quickly, verse 8, found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to God. How, what is the mark of true humility? Obedience to God. That is the mark of humility. It's not what people think about you. Are you obedient to God in your private life? You're a humble person. When the Holy Spirit says, don't go to that dirty internet site, are you obedient? You're a humble person. If you're not, all this pious acting around in church is all rubbish, hypocrite, hypocrisy. Humility is before God. What does God require of you? Do righteously, love mercy and walk humbly before your God. Walk humbly with your God. Jesus' humility was not to impress people. I often think of that place where it says, I don't have time to show you all these verses. In John chapter 2 it says, when Jesus saw these people in the temple, it says he sat there and he told his disciples, get me some string. He said, what do you want string for? Yeah, just bring it. They brought string and he twisted it. Can you, can you picture this in your mind? I wish somebody would draw a painting of this. Jesus taking a string and twisting it into a rope. Making a rope. I've never seen anybody draw a painting of Jesus making a rope. It says there, he made a rope. And the disciples are wondering, what in the world is he making a rope for? And then he's made it real stiff. And he takes it and he chases all the cattle and turns the tables of the money changers and say, get out of here, all of you. Was that humility? How would you do it? You'd say, gentlemen, this is not the place to do all these things. Would you please move your tables out and let's, I, I give you three days, please remove all these stuff. From you. That is humble, right? Because we got our definition of humility from the dictionary. But Jesus, he chased them out. He said, this is a house of prayer. You dare not do these things. Get out all of you. He was the humblest man that walked on the earth. His humility was before God. And I'm sure some of those disciples, old covenant people, didn't have light on it. They thought, ah, oh, this chap lost his temper. We thought he doesn't lose his temper, but he did. How blind they were. The father from heaven said, this is my beloved son. I approve of him. He's never sinned. When a man is angry for the glory of God, that's humility. His humility was before God. And I want to say to all of you, seek to be humble before God. That's what God requires of you. Far too many of us are trying to get a reputation before men to be humble. Forget it! 
You'll never build a pure church if you seek for a reputation before men to be a gentle person, to be a nice person. I fear that some elders, I know some elders like that, they are far more concerned about their reputation before men. People must see I'm a gentle person, I'm a nice person, I'm a humble person. I prophesy you will not build a church in 500 years, even if you live that long. You got to be humble before God. And what God tells you to say, you got to say. What God tells you to do, you got to do. Whether people understand it or not, whether your reason tells you something else or not. If it's in the word, I don't mean some bright idea that hits your head like some people get some bright idea and say, God said to me this, that and the other. Those people are fit to join some Pentecostal charismatic church. I'm talking about people who read God's word and God says something in the word and they begin to think, what will people say if I do this? It doesn't matter what people say. What will my mommy say or daddy say? I don't care what daddy and mommy say. What will the other brothers in our church say? I don't care what the others say. That's what I learned from Jesus, sitting there whipping these people. And if you had done that, I think at least at the end of it, you would have called the disciples and say, hey fellas, I want to tell you, I didn't lose my temper. I want you to know that. No, <laughs> not a word from Jesus. No explanation trying to prove, you know, actually I didn't lose my temper. The Lord told me to do that. And all these explanations that we give to people. Whenever you have to give explanations to people, you know you're wrong. It's like when people have something expensive in their house. They say, well, if somebody comes to their house, they say, you know, actually I didn't pay for this. Somebody gave me a gift, you know, and things like that. Why all this explanation? Why all this explanation? Whose honor are you seeking? You want to prove to that person that you're a very frugal, humble? No, you say, I bought it. I didn't take your money. I used my own money and bought it. Why all this honor seeking? Honor seeking? I I'm telling you, this is serious. This is why God's grace doesn't come upon you. Because you don't, you seek honor from men. Jesus said, how can you believe who seek honor from one another? How can you ever believe? You know, faith and being free from seeking honor is very closely linked together. How can you believe if you seek honor from one another? Walk humbly before your God. And if people misunderstand you, let them misunderstand. Don't go around explaining why you took the whip and why you spoke like that and why you did that and why you bought that expensive thing for your house or why you bought that expensive car. You don't have to give an explanation to any Tom, Dick and Harry in the world. Walk humbly with your God. That's all God requires of you. I'll tell you this, it's serious because I've fought these battles myself. I've been in many situations where I felt people would misunderstand me and the Lord said, forget it. Let them misunderstand you. If they want to judge you, let them judge you.